by the way, um, I'm never too busy for your referrals kind of thing. And I, I say it in my way. I say, if you or anyone you know is trying to buy yourself or sell a home, please let me know. I would love to help them as well. Um, but if like, if it's just a nice to meet you card, I'll say that. And then I always put the referral sticker on the back and my business card inside. So regardless, they're getting that from me, but whether or not I put the actual, like, I'm looking for your referrals, straight up business, they'll hear that from me at least six or seven times during the transaction. I say those things constantly, but whether or not they're put in writing is a different story to answer your question. Well, if you don't know the referral sticker, right? You can get the Buffini box. You should be getting the Buffini box, right? And it costs a little bit of money, but if you get that box, it kind of gives you marketing stuff to do. And the best thing about that whole program is that blue and gold sticker, okay? Use the sticker, put it everywhere. On your signature, on your email, you need to put something kind of like it on there. I would get your phone set up, and I'm going to get my phone set up because Ariel used to work at a phone company. Ariel's going to set my phone up that my signature has something on there. You want to be kicking them to your website. You want to whatever. So all those things. The reason we're talking about this, when you meet somebody, you feel like you want to do the deal, do the deal, do the deal, transaction, 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 and you're going that way. You need to be duplicating that same type person the whole way. If you wait to the end, if, and you want to try to do it then, good. It's just better if you do it the whole way. Mm -hmm. Now, what would be a, another mm -hmm. way that we could duplicate these people? Let's give them, it doesn't have to be their name, but what's their name? Just call them. Um, the, their names were Lark and Mark. <laughs> They're married. Okay, Lark Very and Mark. Cute we, we, yes. want to, we want to duplicate them. Yes. What are some other ways we could duplicate them, Ariel? So um, another way that you could duplicate them is to door knock um, because I just closed that that technically doesn't stem from them though so is that what you're asking proficient now keep going sorry well let me, let me tell you what i think we could do okay all right and the thing is um every situation is different okay you're not going to be able to apply everything and every rule to every person and you may not want to okay if you really like them now when i was a really good young realtor been a while i did lose my razor sorry um, I'm looking at some of these bearded people. I'm not trying to keep up with the bearded people. I didn't. Uh, I, I lost my razor. I did. <laughs> okay. All right. I left it at the beach. All right. I do a lot of copies and a lot, a lot of, of copies. Like, sorry. Okay. It, that's, that's probably perfect. more what you were So, Lark and Mark, yeah. while we're going on, because see, these people are frustrated, right? You're trying to buy the perfect house at their price. Okay. No such thing as a perfect house. So, don't even try for that. You need to tell people, we're going to find you the house that's got most of the big things you want. We're probably not going to be able to find one that's got all of you. The faster and the sooner you set the correct expectation, the faster they're going to buy, the faster they're going to love you. Okay? Because if they say like this, I want to buy a four-bedroom house. I want a level wooded lot, I want a quiet cul-de-sac, and I want this, and I want this, and I want this. You gotta say, and, you, and, I, and I want it right beside this. Well, we got some challenges there. Your budget is 350,000, correct? Yes, my budget's 350. Well, homes that sell for 350,000, don't have that large of a lot. Don't, you know, so we've got to decide, do you want to drive further out than you want to get what you're describing? Or would you like a smaller lot closer in where you're at? And it might not be a four bedroom. We might get a three bedroom. And it might, you know, you know what I'm saying? You've got to set real expectations kind of up front, but give them the choice, right? Yes, sir. Along the same lines, I've been thinking of a question for the last five minutes. When you started, you mentioned uh, your buyer call and you did it over the phone because of COVID. Mm -hmm. What is your buyer call? What are the important elements in it? 
uh, that you make sure you touch on when you do that? Because it sounds like it goes very much along with what Mike's saying. Yeah, good question. Um, so for me, just the way that I like to conduct my business, I want the overall theme as a get to know them. Um, I want it to be more like a consultation rather than like bam, 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 bam. Um, so for me, the important elements are obviously like, have you talked to a lender? That's the first big question that you want to ask them right away, because if they haven't, that is the first step they need to do. Um, you want to make sure that you understand their timeline, whether or not they have any leases currently in place, like if they're renting and they need to be out by a certain time. Um, I just met with a buyer for the first time on Monday and they have that situation. So we're trying to get pre-approval rolling right now. And if I hadn't asked those questions in the first call, we wouldn't really be able to move forward because it's a tight timeline. Um, but another thing that I want to make sure that I know is what they're looking for in a house. Um, just like Mike said, I try really hard to set those proper expectations up from the jump because that's just who I am as a person. I'm going to tell you like it is anyway, but um, you're going with OCD. I want to be a little NBC. <laughs> hmm. um, I can do both. Um, but I. <laughs> Um, I want to make sure that I also understand things that they're looking for structurally in a home, whether or not they need to be in a ranch because whatever, they want four bedrooms, three bathrooms, the square footage. I tell them, and with setting proper expectations, I tell them, pick the three things that are like must haves for you, because that's how I'm going to start my MLS search for them. I try and keep it broad just because the more criteria you put in, the less options you have to look at. And normally I feel like you'd want to be a little more concentrated, but in this market, opening up those options allows them to see what's out there. Do you give them choices or do you tell them? So I always, it's like a combination of both because you want them to feel like they're in control, but you want to guide them towards what you know is best because at the end of the day, you are the expert, right? And even if you're not people, Make it till you make it because you know more than they do, um, usually. <laughs> so what I would say is if you have like prime example, picking a lender, if they're not currently working with someone. Use I down first. What? Use down first. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. But here's Easy. The there you go. All right, way to go. Is, way to go. Yes. But Use down first mortgage. Okay, yes. go ahead. So I have personally two lenders I work with often. Audrey, Audrey Kidd at Town First is one of them. I have another one who happens to not be there. But I always try and either one will provide exceptional service. They'll be timely in their response. And I let them know that. So I know when I send that email saying, hey, here are your choices, but either one is going to work out in your favor. So you want to guide them and give them options, even though they're both technically coming from you. You want them to feel like they have a choice, even though either one is like kind of your decision. Well, you want to you want to always give people choices sure. that work for you. Yeah, I could show you the house Tuesday at four or Wednesday at five, mm -hmm. which would be better for you, Mr. Jones. So you want to give you want to box it up, and the cool part is. Everything we've said so far is in your infinity training manual. Mm -hmm. Read it, read it, read it, read it, read it, read mm -hmm. it, okay? Because you want to give choices mm -hmm. that allow them to feel like they're making all the decisions, mm -hmm. but all the choices already work for you. Right. Some of you are so crazy. Some of you go, when do you want me to show you houses? And what do they do? They zero in on the time that works for you the worst. Mm -hmm. Every time. Okay. So when you say when, and they say three o'clock Friday, and you can't do it. So know your schedule, know what's going on, plan a little in advance, mm -hmm. and give them choices that work. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we're rolling now. All right, the duplication piece. Now, all those things allow you to ask, okay? Should you ask for referrals when things are tense or when everybody's really smiling? <laughs> definitely are, the latter what are the good times to ask for more referrals so if i'm honestly at the end of a showing i find is a, one that went well a showing that went well if they're on a high mentally if they receive good news great if they had a um probably not with a home inspection i wouldn't say that um i try really hard to make my buyers know that i am here to yes be their real real estate expert but i'm also a friend so i do a lot of coffees with my clients i'll take them to lunch or whatever um so anytime i do those i always even if it's not directly do you know anybody who's looking to buy or sell because right now i mean 
obviously I use that verbiage, but if you want to do it in a more subtle way, something that I always end my conversations with is please, if you, well, I guess I do say it, if you know anybody, obviously I am down to help anytime, but obviously it's different words. Um, so I just, yeah. I always, okay. I always try and slide it in when they're on a positive note. So. Well, when they're, when they're smiling, okay, when, when you showed them four properties and they liked all four properties, mm -hmm. you guys got to sell it a little bit, okay? You are a salesperson, right? So when they're smiling and things are going good, you want to say how fun it was, how great the houses were. Wow, Brian, it's it's awesome that all four houses are perfect for you. And then they're going to say, well, they're not perfect for me. Well, I didn't mean perfect, but they did have the location. They did have the space. They did have this kind of like those TV shows, right? The first one had the ocean view you wanted for 250000 The second one had the beautiful outdoor living area you wanted for 250000 And the third one had this. Which one do you think is the best for your family? Now, which one is the best for you and your family? Okay. Get them saying it's best. Okay. I like to say, wow, this is fun. This wasn't even like work, was it? And they're going to say, oh, no, this was great. Have you guys ever thought of being a real realtor? It was such a great day. Wouldn't you like to be a realtor? You could come on board and work with us at Hometown Realty. Most people are going to say, are you crazy? I don't want commission, whatever. But if you like them and it was a fun day and you looked at some good houses, flatter them a little bit. Come on, be like us. Some will, but one in a thousand will. Okay. But make it a little fun and get sell. It was fun. It wasn't just, I showed you a house. This was great. I showed you four great houses. You get a little bit excited about the four great houses, right? Okay. And if they say, let's pretend they said a good, a good, they said, oh, we like all three of them. Well, great. Do you have two friends that could buy the runner up in the next one? Because if y'all going to pick the one you want, then I'd be glad to sell your friends number two. Which, which you know, which one are you, you know, so you could, you could start, you got to start thinking when you meet them, you don't just want to get the one deal. You want to sell them. And then you want to be their realtor for their friends, right? So it's a little goofy, but you know, you got to be thinking all the way. But I feel like what happens is, and the reason we're talking about this is you get so tunnel vision on Jinx wants to get them under contract, under contract, under contract, that you forget, look at all the opportunities, you know, where do they work? How many people do they work with? You got to have small talk while you're doing all this. Oh, do you work from home or do you work in a big office? There's 57 of us on one floor. Oh, 57 all on one floor? How many of those people would like to buy Shenandoah Road, the one y'all didn't like? You know, or let's pretend there was a house that the people totally hated. Do you have anyone at work that you'd like to buy Bluebird Way? Have a little fun with it, right? Bluebird weighs like the bad house. So you can kind of joke a little bit, you know, have a little fun. Don't be so uptight because if you're a brand new realtor and they sense you're uptight, it's kind of like a dog knows when you're scared. You got to loosen it up a little bit. All right. Now we've sold on the house. We've done a few things. We've been on some coffees and we're going to closing. What can we do at closing to duplicate them? Um, well, I always give a closing gift. Um, I always try and take a picture of all of my people and post it on my social media and make sure to refer it back out to those people. If you or anyone else you know is trying to buy or sell, let me know. Um, I follow up with notes to them. I still try and stay in contact with all of those people. Um, for me, I put a list of everyone I've closed in front of my face and I make sure that I'm calling those people regularly also because a lot of those people are in a point where they are hopefully talking about their home buying experience and maybe one of their friends has said something, you know, I've been thinking about buying a house. So even if you aren't necessarily asking them straight up front, like, do you know someone? Cause that does get a little bit aggressive in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Um, but I 
for me, even just being present in their lives is a reminder that you are, you are doing something right. Like you're making a contact, you're reaching out. Um, so that's something that I do after closing. And like this one guy, he, I literally could throw a rock and hit his house. That's how close he lives to this office, but he is giving me, he has given me a referral. That's actually closing on Friday All things hopefully. Um, and then I'm meeting with him this Saturday to potentially list his house and his wife just gave me a new buyer lead. The one I was talking about earlier. So like if you're nursing those people and just having regular contact with them, it helps. Um, Mike said it, I think in our team meeting, but for not, not everyone's on our team, Dylan, but, um, like you don't have to have, I mean, you want to have a big circle, but at the same time, like work those small people a lot and do it the right way. Like make sure that you're one piece of advice, like be thoughtful. Mike talks to everybody, but he's very good about everybody feeling special while he's talking to them. So you want to ask them questions, learn about who they are, but it's true. Learn about who they are because that's how you, that's how you separate yourself from the other agents who are just going to be churn and burn. And I'm just in this for the paycheck. At the end of the day, if people know that they trust you and you are acting in their best interest, they're going to be so much more likely to refer you to others. And also one thing that I heard that for me just stuck with me and maybe it's because I love to eat as much as I do, but someone told me you don't take food from a stranger. So uh, one thing that I try and do is like give my people coffees or bring them food or like those apple pies that we do. Like that's a sign of trust. That's a sign of camaraderie and friendship. So for me, that's what builds the base and how I work outward from those people because the guys who I'm going to list their house, you better believe they already have their hometown shirts. They got a pie at Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, they get regular pop buys and notes like their Valentine's gifts, they get everything, but they've given me potentially three transactions. So if you're working those people consistently, even if you're not asking for a referral every single time, you're establishing yourself essentially as a presence in their life, not just someone who's going to get their paycheck and leave. Well, all those things need to be every time. Okay, you do it. Now we've done all that. We, we got a great rapport. What happens now is most realtors fade away, okay? All right, she was talking about gifts and things. You do a pop by. Pop by is in your, no, it was great. Pop by is in your infinity training book, right? So you've got a client, you've closed them, and they maybe or maybe haven't given you a lead yet, but we wanna duplicate them, so you do the regular pop by. Now explain a pop by post-closing. So a pop by post closing, I actually, um, my first ever clients, I'm going over to their house tonight and, um, we're just going to hang out and catch up. Um, their, the husband came to the party last week with the kids in the bouncy house. So great, like post way to show. Yeah. Well, show. Just like you try and have those touches, but a great pop by for them. The example I'm giving is I did get them a closing gift, but the entire time we were going through the transaction, the wife and I had talked about plants and how I have a lot of them and she has none because she kills them. So I went over to their house one day and I brought them a snake plant. And I mean, that is a little bit more expensive than a traditional pop by because typically you want them to be something easy like the easiest one is a bag of popcorn hey just wanted to pop by and see how you were doing oh by the way if you know anybody trying to buy or sell, sell a house please let me know but like a pop by again going back to the way i like to treat my business i want to relate it to them my friend just had a baby and i'm planning on even though she had a baby shower and i went to it i'm gonna go pop by and see if she needs like any kind of formula or diapers. I might bring her a thing of diapers, you know? Um, it's just- Or just bring a new mama coffee. Or a new mama coffee. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just some small token that you can bring them to let them know that you're thinking about them. And while you're there, oh, by the way. Tell them about our July pot buys. The jam ones? Oh, the tomatoes. Okay, sorry. I was I was thinking about the ones that LA sent the email about yeah. yesterday. So for Mike Chenault group, we're doing Hanover tomatoes and he wants us to do two pot buys a day for three weeks. And he has these little cards that it's just a bundle of tomatoes that you bring and says, I appreciate your referrals from my head. Tomatoes. Tomatoes. <laughs> Tom tomatoes. Tomatoes. You get what it's trying to say. Well, see that way you don't have to say it because right. it's going to be on the card. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say, give me a referral. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but you want to go see them now. Okay. Now we're seeing, look, look at the compounding effect. Okay. 
we've done this, we've done this, we've done this, we've done this, we've done this. Well, then you don't have to ask anymore. They know mm -hmm. you're on their team. And when I'm on your team, okay, watch, watch this. This could be great. Hey, Tanner, I love you, man. Love you too, Mike. You do this every yes. time. Do you get it? I mean, do you get it? Okay. Tanner has got a beard. He weighs about 240 pounds and he loves me. Okay. <laughs> if you show people that you care about what's going on, they're going to look out for you. They're going to look out for you. But if you don't care about them, they won't care about you. All right. You don't have to be best friends. You don't have to go on vacation. These are your clients. You want to give them great service. You want to be irreplaceable and you want them to know they were more than a commission check. I hate to say this, but anybody can sell a house. Literally anybody. What they are getting working with a real estate agent is your level of customer service, your attention to detail, your willingness to go <clears throat> above and beyond for them during the transaction. So prove that you are an investment because at the end of the day, you are and that you want them to turn around and tell your name to eight different people or whatever the multiplying effect is. Okay. Well, I got passionate, right. I'm sorry. You did good, you did good. Okay, now we're great. Okay, now two huge opportunities, all right? While you're doing this and you know they're a good client, you like working with them, you know, they, they're on board with you. You can do a closing party. Okay, again, in your infinity training books, this is not new material. All right, so let's pretend I've sold April a house and I get along great with her. April, oh, April. <laughs> sorry, you know, okay. April, you know, you know, I know, you know, I know who you are, I know. Samantha. Okay, Ariel, <laughs> Ariel, not April. I sold Ariel a house in April. Okay, it went really good, things are going great. I know you've got a lot going on and you're moving into your new home. I'd like to have a little closing party or housewarming party for you. If you give me 20 of your friends or 10 of your friends, or I don't know how many people you'd like to invite over, but I will provide X and I will coordinate them. See, I'm a little fatter than her. So what I used to do is I would say, hey, I want to have a barbecue in your backyard and I'm going to cook the barbecue. I'll get your friends and family to bring some of the other stuff. I'll coordinate the party and I'll put right on there. It's okay to bring a great gift to the housewarming party. Okay. So they would give me the names and addresses. This is old school, right? You guys will be emailing now. I would get the names and the addresses of their friends. I would get a goofy little thing about a barbecue. I would send it out and say, Ariel, April, whoever is going to have a party in their yard. I'm throwing the party. I'm going to do the barbecue. I need volunteers for this, 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 like eight things. Please call me and let me know if you can come to the party. And at the bottom, I really would because nobody ever asked for a gift. If I'm the realtor, I'm going all in, right? It's okay to bring a fabulous gift to the housewarming party when you come eat my delicious barbecue and check out Ariel's new house. You know, the person would never say that. But when I say that, they know, okay, he's a little pushy. He's really looking out for Ariel. And he's cooking the barbecue. You have 20 new COI contacts. <laughs> and all of a sudden, 20 more people know I'm a realtor and I'm her realtor. That's the important thing. Your goal during all this, when we kind of beat around the bush, the goal is the buyer needs to call you my realtor. Proudly, my realtor. The pop by. Do the damn pop by at their office, people. Don't be cray cray. All right. You do the pop by to their office. Now, don't see, I'm today. I look like I'm golfing or moving boxes, possibly. Um, you don't want to go looking like that when you go to their office, get looking realtorish. You know, tie, shirt, look good, dress, heels, whatever you're doing. When you go to their office, you do the pop by at their office. You are on display, right? Most of us do the pop bys to their house because you sold them the house, and that's cool. But I don't want y'all all working 5:30 to 6:30 every night. 
do the pop buys at their office. Go in their office so their office workers go, who was that? Think about it. The more people that tell their friends and coworkers, that's my realtor, that's my realtor, that's my realtor. What's your realtor doing here? You're not moving, are you? No, I bought my house three years ago. Why is your realtor here? I guess he's got nothing to do and he still cares about me. You know what I'm saying? When you show up a year or two years after the sale, when they tell their friends, my realtor, it means a lot, okay? So that's the kind of thing. So do your pop buys to their work. Do your pop buys often. All right, she just said our group is targeting two pop buys a day. Why would it be good? I'm starving. <laughs> Sorry, I'm fat. I'm hungry. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Sorry, I hope y'all couldn't pick that up on the mic. Thanks. April. I was going to say, you messed up my name. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got me. Okay. All right, here we go. Way off track. Back on track. Back on track. Back Back on track. Where were we? Back to the action. Two pop buys a day. Two pop buys a day. That's, that's, that's doing it, right? One a week is for sissies. Three a week, whatever. Three a week is when you got bunches of appointments and you're just so busy. How about two pop buys a day? Think about it. Let's pretend for the month of July, you do two pop buys a day. Let's pretend you don't have any buyer seller appointments. I would make a little rule, Mike. If you don't have a buyer or seller appointment, you do two pop buys. And a pop buy goes like this. Hey, I'd like to come by and see you. Just a pop by, catch up. I want to tell you what I'm doing. Check out what you're doing. Can I swing by your work today between 11 and 12? Can I add to that? Yep. Yeah incorporate normal things that you would do in your daily life into those pop buys. For example, I have buyers who I met through the front desk at my chiropractor's office and my nail tech, my nail tech the person who does my nails. But, and then I met with him and he was like, yeah, our budget's half a million dollars. Okay, sure. Let's go. So, I mean, in all of the things that you normally do, that's one of the great parts about this job, right? You do make your own schedule and you can make those pop buys. But every time you do something, Nick Slemp told me when I first started, he said, never be afraid to tell people what you do for a living. Always have those conversations with people so that people you meet in everyday life, like even if you go and you get coffee from the same place every day, befriend the, bar the barista going to say bartender, befriend that person, give them your business card. I literally got coffee somewhere yesterday with uh, hopefully someone I can work with through the Chesterfield Chamber of Commerce. But we went to a new coffee place in Quinton and I sent the coffee place a thing because I talked to the guy who had been there and he was like, yeah, we moved from Prince George. We're currently renting. Have those conversations with people. That's how you duplicate. Because even though I was meeting with someone I knew wasn't potentially a buyer at this moment, he could be one day, first of all, but always make that next connection, people. Incorporate the things that you're going to do anyway. Make sure you hand out your business card. Is that good? Yeah. All right. Exclamation point. If you look through your Infinity Training book, okay, and all the stuff we're doing, all this goes on. Then you have the client event party every year. Okay, your COI party, your client appreciation party. You should host and have a client appreciation event. It could be small with your favorite six. It could be your family and friends if you're new. You know, everybody wants to send letters. I'm good with letters. I send a lot of letters. I send more letters than probably anybody else because I can't write very well. So a typed letter works better for me with a crappy signature. Okay. Letters are good. Face-to-face -face is better. You need to have a client event party or a COI party, right? So if you're a new agent and you got a lot going on, go to your family, go to your friends, go to your mom, go to your dad. Hey, I want to have a little client appreciation party. I want to have a COI appreciation party. Because see, by now they should know that they're in your database. You know? The mayor campaign, you got to have a talk with them. They need to know you're counting on them. So the mayor campaign, you see all this stuff stacks. And the more you do of those things, the better it gets. But then you have the big client appreciation party and you invite your clients and you say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all are the greatest clients in the world. I'm so blessed and lucky to be able to work with people like you every day. Thanks for coming. I want you to come have a great time. 
Uh, you make my business and my job great and fun. Thank you. Okay. Client appreciation party. It's in your infinity training, right? So we got all this. And I realized you got to walk before you can run. How about y'all go on board and we plan? So the good thing about the pop by is I got some new young people here, right? They don't have to say the words. If you put it in writing to make a goofy little gift, you don't have to say it. You can put the blue sticker, uh -huh. you put the gold and blue sticker, uh -huh. or you can say, I appreciate your referrals from my head to my toes. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. All right. We got to do that kind of stuff. We got to do it. We got to do it. We got to do it. Now you got to get excited about your best people. Because if you're not excited about them, they're not going to be excited about you. So get excited about your best clients. If you want to duplicate a client, you do everything you possibly can to be at the top of their list. And the reason we asked Ariel, she's doing a great job. She's relatively new. How long have you been in the business? I, my license was in October. So All right. Now give, give these people some hope. How do you feel today versus how you felt at 90 days? Oh, <laughs> totally different. I mean, <laughs> if I will say one thing, I Dylan, you've been here longer than I have, Devin, you have as well. But like, if I can say one, one thing, it's just like, keep going every single day. You're going to learn at least two new things. And it never really, it gets easier for sure, but it never, you never stop learning. So just take it one day at a time. Um, I feel much more confident now than I did at 90 days and even 120 days, you know, it's just, I, I try really hard to continue learning as much as possible and absorbing as much as possible because there's just so much to learn with this job, but fake it until you make it. I really meant that because at the end of the day, even if you are only in this for a couple of months, you know more than they do. And you have to portray yourself as the expert. And I always tell people, I'm, I'm not going to ever tell you that I know all of the answers, but I can promise you that if I don't know it, I will find it and I'll get back to you in a timely manner. Open honesty and like being upfront about that with people, they will have a much greater appreciation for you than if you try and like tell them something that might not not that you would ever intentionally lie but if you say something and you're not sure and it ends up being wrong and you find out three weeks later and you've really made a mistake just be honest with them and find the right information first guys pop by pop by pop by for july okay let's put it in place that's a simple little thing you got to see your people okay you got to see your people. So identify 80 people today, identify them and call and make a conscious effort to go see them. Wear your hometown realty shirt. If you're going to be a little sloppy and wear like short sleeve shirt. And uh, sometimes like if a guy works at a place where it's 140 degrees and you're out, to, you know, whatever, then maybe you don't want to wear dress up, but be the realtor piece, be the realtor piece, go, if we do two pop buys a day for three or four weeks, it's going to come back to you. It'll really come back to you. But let me tell you what nothing does. Nothing is a waste. Okay. Bear Bryant, the greatest football coach of all times, unless you want to say Saban. I don't really like Saban as much. Bear Bryant was thought of as the greatest coach, right? I don't know how many seconds there are in a day. But however many they are, that's what he always talked about. So you ought to Google, figure out how many seconds in a day, and then Google Bear Bryant that many seconds. And he's got a real good story that he would always tell his team. And that's how many opportunities you have to get better a day. That's how many opportunities you have to shift into gear. Okay. You guys know what being in gear is. Now, most of what Ariel said was action, action, action. You know, finding buyers, finding sellers, referral sources. The more things you do a day to improve your stock with your buyers, sellers, and your database, the better you're going to be. Yeah, I was kind of on a roll. What you need, buddy? Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't done. I wasn't done, but go ahead. Well, go ahead. Now you're off the track. Go. Oh, good. Go ahead. Uh, I get to meet everybody who starts here. And uh, I remember when you started, and everybody has a different personality. 
Uh, the thing I remember about you the most, though, is you did everything. You took all the training, sometimes more than once. You did all the manual stuff. Yeah. But my pastor uses a word in all of his messages. It's the word intentional. Yeah. Everything you do is on purpose. It's intentional. It's with the expectation that something is going to happen. It's not you did all the things and then you waited around for something to occur. You were intentional in everything you did, including in my classes. <laughs> and I think that's a strength. And I wanted to tell you that. Thank you. Yeah, Mark. that's great. It's really nice of you. Thank that's you. huge. All right. The cool part about the real estate business is you can choose. It doesn't matter what you've done in your previous life. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. You know, we all know what we should have done different yesterday. Okay? Don't dwell on it. Ted Lasso says have a 10-second memory, right? Okay? So we'll pass that. Let's do something good. Let's be a better you every single day. Let's be better to our database. Let's be better to our clients. Let's be better to our friends, our family, our coworkers. Be a better person. Be a better realtor every day and just work on getting better. And it stacks up. I will tell you something funny. I sent a letter. I like letters, right? Because see, you got to remember who your audience is. Landowners. Most landowners aren't 19 years old. Most landowners are 50 to 80. Okay? 50 to 80. 50 to 80 people like paper. You know, 20 to 50 don't like paper. I've gone paperless personally. Uh, not true. No. I sent a letter to a lady that owns a piece of land that I like. And I don't send a lot of random things. I look at exact pieces of property. And I send a letter and I try to put something in the letter that would be about their property. She called me yesterday. She said, Mike, I'm sure you don't know who I am. You sent me a letter about seven years ago. And I'm ready to sell. Okay. Now, I'm not saying mail a bunch of letters and wait seven years. The compounding effect of everything you do is going to be big the further you go, okay? Like year one, you don't get as much of impact, okay? Year two, you get more. Year three, you get more. Year 10, 12, 14, whatever, all the stuff you do, it stacks up. These people have good memories. The more you do, if she does a pop by three times a year to a family for the first year, she might get a deal. She does the same family three times a year, stays in touch with them five years after the sale. They may be giving her their cousins, their aunts, their mamas, their daddies, whatever. You got to be in it for the long haul. If you want those people to be committed to you for the long haul, you know? So the reason we got Ariel to do it, she's doing a fabulous job. Um, her business is really growing. And from whenever the 90 day was, because at 90 days, she was a little sensitive to, holy crap, this is harder than I thought. And then in about six months, stuff started falling into place. You know, what are we, about eight months now? Yeah, something like that. So we're about eight months. And now all of a sudden, she does. She sounds like a realtor. And she, she sounds like a realtor, you know? So it takes a lot of effort. Some of you might get it in 30 or 60 or 90 days. Some of you might need three or four years. The more reps, the better you're going to get, okay? The more you believe, okay? Not to talk about Ted Lasso again, but I love Ted Lasso. But I'm going to talk about Ted Lasso. We're going to talk about Ted Lasso. <laughs> believe, believe believe okay if you haven't watched the show it's a pretty good show but it's all about believe you got to believe okay if you have read your infinity training book get all that going believe all of it it all works everything ariel said it all works okay you got to believe in you and you got to do it and you got to do it like you got a big old safety net so that's the hard part you've got to pretend you're walking across that tightrope with a great big safety net Okay, you got to do it like you just can't fail. You know, the hesitancy is because you don't want to sound goofy. You don't want to bother people. 
you don't want to, you don't want to, whatever. That's the negative thing going on. You got to get past that. Don't listen to that. Dean Cheatham always called that the drunk monkey. Okay. He said, it won't work. It won't work. Don't do it. Oh, don't, don't say it. The mayor campaign is stupid. The just listed campaign won't work. You know, oh, pop buys, dumbest thing I ever heard Mike Chenault say. Guys, you know what works. Believe in it, trust it, and do it. Okay. So let's get after it. I'm going to challenge everybody two pop buys a day for 21 days. It'll change your world. It might not change your world in 21 days, Devin, but it will change your world by Thanksgiving. It will change your world by next spring, you know? So get in there, get after it. If you've got any questions, anybody have any questions, want to talk about anything today? Any questions of Ariel? Everybody's so excited. All right, let's give Ariel a big, big hand. All right, go get them. Get those pot pies. Thank you, John. Where is there a new coffee shop in Quilton? Um, it's, I don't know how new it is, but it was Safari Coffee. It was new okay. to me. It was new to okay. me. 